I apologize, guys, for this um, delay. I had to restart the computer, and uh, it takes a long time. It's, um, I'm having some technical issues lately. So guys, this is London Session Scenarios. We're looking at pound, dollar, and pound yen. As always, we're looking at um, larger charts first. Um, going to draw a picture of the market um, based on a classic um, technical analysis, support resistance, trend lines, Fibonacci, and uh, Elliott waves. Then we're going to look at uh, the rainbow chart, the one I currently have um, uh, up, and um, we'll see what um, trades we can expect for today uh, in short term and even maybe for uh, longer term swing trades. Uh, well, we'll see what sort of opportunities the market gives us. So let's jump into it. Um, I'm going to have a look at um, pound dollar first. Just a quick uh, update on what we saw since last week. All right. We had this picture, I think um, this chart is about four weeks old, and I think we have a full, let's say that the scenario already reached its target. It's quite uh, interesting that the target actually was respected. This was the target of the of the wave three, uh, what turned out to be a wave three. Now, this was my projected wave, the one, two, three, four, five, according to what um, the Elliott waves suggest um, it should have looked at, uh, like. Obviously, the waves never um, go precisely as you expect as, as you expect them to do. But have a look at uh, the actual formation. The one to three for five is still respected. It's just that the the actual formations inside these waves were different. This is why I always say that we have to adapt to what the market is giving us. For instance, you see that this is a bottom. You see that the retracement is finally giving you something. You know this is wave four. Of course, I couldn't have known that when the market was around here when we first uh, drew this um, scenario. And in the end, let's just uh, update this scenario. We're going to update it. Uh, well, I'm going to draw another picture. Uh, this um, seems a bit uh, too busy, this chart quite a large wave tree. I think one of you guys suggested this possibility uh, that wave tree um, would be something really big. Well, wave five, we're not sure that it's yet complete. Now, this is our job today to determine what's going on on this wave. And at least we don't have to reanalyze the whole picture. Okay? We have enough on this chart to to give us a short-term analysis, still in wave 4 of pink, with wave 5 still to follow. Pink, just a second then. I think we're still inside this pink wave. I don't have any proof that it's complete. Remember that I need quite a number of elements to give me a good enough probability that the pink wave is complete. Of course, it's possible that this was actually the last um, wave 5 and we ended the wave here and we are now in a bullish wave. That's a possibility, but I cannot um, analyze based on such uh, scenarios because I don't have enough elements. And again, what are the elements we're looking for? Let's see. Uh, where is the trend line of the wave? There are some objective rules I'm following, so it um, should be easy to determine uh, where we are. Now, this trend line is far from being broken, not even close. Um, can we move this trend line in a more aggressive, on a more aggressive, draw it in a more aggressive way? We can do this, but it's still not broken. That's right, that's right, Dan. Uh, that's what I think, too. If you are referring to this red wave up, this, or you are referring to the whole picture, maybe something like this, you know, this is where um, an analysis based on Elliott waves can get confusing. 
you know, because you, you have a number of possibilities. This is actually a possibility right now, okay? And yes, it's possible that we are moving up still inside the way four. The, the way I'm usually treating such situations is I'm just going to take from all this whatever is relevant for me right now, whatever is useful for me, okay? Now, I cannot say if we are now in a flat wave, wave four, and we're going to go up towards 157, okay, that would give us a bullish perspective, or we are still going down. I'm, I just have to follow the rules. So let's see. If the pink trend line is not broken, I'm just going to assume that the wave is going something like this, and I leave it in the air because I do not know. It's just we are in this. We have a retracement. The retracement has reached. Let's see where it actually went. Very close to 38.2, which is the typical wave 4 retracement. Wave 4 is not, in general, um, as a guideline, it's not a very large correction. Well, in the logic of the waves, this happens because wave 3, we are actually retracing wave 3, which is the biggest, the longest, the strongest move in the direction of the trend. So you're not going to see a pullback of 61.8 or 78% inside wave 4. If that happens, most likely you're not looking at a wave 4. Most likely it's something else. So if this is a wave 3, then the top of the wave, uh, sorry, uh, a wave 4, then the top of this wave 4 should be somewhere around here, around 157.50, one, maybe 158. So we already have as a high 157.13 complex correction. That's that's a good point. Wave 2, according to our um, to our drawing here, is a very simple push up. Basically, it's a very small correction. It's not that small compared to Wave 1, but it's, it's very small compared to Wave 3. And then it's suggesting that because Wave 2 and Wave 4 tend to be different in terms of, uh, of duration and um, structure many times even a uh, different type. Um, we're talking about flats uh, as opposed to um, zigzags. So if this one is a zigzag, it's likely that this would be a flat and vice versa. But that's actually a, a good observation. This was a simple correction. You don't really see much happening here. You, you don't see a lot of, of consolidation. So that's why Dan is suggesting maybe we are seeing something like this on the current wave. Now let's just go there and see. One moment. Let's just um, analyze both uh, possibilities. We're actually trying to get a useful, uh, something we can use for trading, right? So we're going to see if this is happening according to uh, your assumption, then it means we should have bought in here, and we're looking at a move up, all right? If my assumption is correct that we're actually inside the wave five, given the logic of the, of the wave, I actually have to assume that we are moving on with the trend. So I prefer to keep this bearish view overall because that's the, the trend that we're still following. And as long as this trend line and this horizontal line here, which I'm going to um, color pink as well, as long as these lines are not broken, as long as we don't have another uh, maybe a 157, I don't have reasons to believe that we're looking for more upside. Okay, so the trend is definitely still bearish. Of course, Dan will will say right now, and uh, it it would be correct, say that yeah, if we are reaching 157, that would be the target. So that there's no point in actually going long when the target has already been reached. The point is to try to find something now uh, before the market goes up. Now let's zoom in on the four-hour chart. Mm-hmm. All right, then let's have a look. Let, let, let's see this um, in, um, in more detail, you know. As we uh, zoom on the charts, we can um, maybe get different perspectives, all right? When we're talking waves, there are always different opinions, and <laughs> you have to listen to, to all these opinions because any of them might be true, all right? Now, let's see. What do we see on the current wave? We have one, two, three. It's pretty clear so far. This looks to me like a wave four. So, 
far as I see right here, okay, we have one level to look at. Let me remove some of these lines. I don't want to complicate the chart too much. There are too many lines. It's too confusing. Uh, okay, I'll remove some of the higher levels as well. And I'll keep this, but I'll just use the red color because it's a level we have from the daily chart. A bit lower. All right, somewhere around 5344. Okay. Now, this would be a level relevant, I think, for the four hour chart. Uh, it's the current resistance at 5480 almost. I'll um, use the black color for it. We are currently above, but in only 10 minutes, this four hour um, candle will close. Um, as far as I'm concerned, if it doesn't close somewhere around 155 or above, I will not consider this level to be broken. Okay? And I think there's another level we're interested in. This current support at 5397. I'll um, use blue for this line because I think its uh, relevance is on the one hour chart. Now, what do we have? We have and we're going to analyze this from both perspectives, all right? Now, the first is the bearish, in which we assume that this last wave would be a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and it's actually pointing downward, okay, with, you see a complicated uh, retracement pattern here then, as opposed to this simple retracement, the exact same uh, uh, principle that uh, you mentioned earlier, okay? And that would mean we will have to bounce somewhere below 155.20. If it goes anywhere in this area here, and I'll actually mark this level because I think uh, it's important for us to be prepared. Now, this is a previous support and previous resistance at 5547. I'll mark it with orange because I think starting at this point, Dan's scenario becomes more probable and actually there'll be little argument left for the short side because the possibility of the wave 4 is decreasing dramatically if price reaches above 5547. If then is correct, then we're looking for something quite big. So that means we're not late entering at 5547 with a stop, well, probably around 154, 50, 154, 70. Okay, there will be plenty of room ahead, and the target for this will be, let me check the daily again, yeah, somewhere in the 157.20 area. All right, probably slightly higher, but if I do uh, go long, I'll probably take uh, my profits around here. I like um, exiting somewhere around 10 pips above the round number. So we're looking at about 150 pips, nice bullish price action here, okay? Now you see then, we do not have to agree actually. Uh, we, I think the best thing to do is to be prepared and let the market choose which scenario it prefers. And when our levels are reached, we just jump in, we know what to expect, all right? But it's true that above 155.50, the chance of this becoming, uh, well, way for going so so far away, so high up, I think the possibilities are, are the probability for that is very low. All right, so this will be the first uh, the first thing I'm looking for. Now let's see what happens if we choose to be bearish. The indicators are giving. Uh, your scenario, some support there, Dan. Uh, this is a sort of um, indicator uh, um, display that I find to be a bullish signal. That's when the two lines would have to cross back bearish. It was bearish all this while. Went into consolidation. It crossed up. This is not really a bullish signal as far as I'm concerned. But if it doesn't cross down, and again, the angle is starting to... Um, to widen, then, well, 
this becomes a bullish signal. The indicators are pointing up. The rate of change is very, very flat, though. So it's more the direction indicators, the rate of change, and the MACD is giving you a, a bullish signal. But the more immediate short-term indicator, the rate of change, is very, very flat. This tells us we we are in a moment when possibly uh, we can see change in direction. It's uh, more prudent to to allow the market first to make its decision before trying to anticipate, okay, and to outsmart the market. Even my uh, trend indicator is indicating uh, 20%, which is below the 30% uh, limit for a bearish uh, trend. It's actually decreasing as we uh, go along. So it just seems like uh, we're somewhere in between. Now you see the hourly, the hourly candle closed at the resistance point, and even now we are not above the resistance. On the one hour chart, the resistance is slightly higher. I'll move this level for the one hour chart, okay? Because I'm interested to see a real breakout. Uh, seems to me like a retracement. Even if it does go uh, higher up, still looks like a retracement to me. I will not trust this move until it um, stabilizes above 155. That's all I can tell you for now. <coughs> if it doesn't conquer this 155 level and stays above, not with a spike, just seeing one or maybe two, three hourly candles staying above 155, I will not buy this uh, move up. All right, let's see shorter term. Hmm. <laughs> this is one more argument actually for me not to not to buy right now. See this one, two, three, possibly four. The resistance becomes support. I think we should see a a spike towards one five five, but only after that w the market will give us some real indication where it's going. In any case, if it doesn't clear this one five five twenty area, proving that we're looking at something much bigger. Um, I do not have a bullish um, signal. This is exactly the sort of situation I, I like to avoid. I don't want to go long here to be actually long at the very peak, at the, possibly at, at the exact top of this formation. So again, the fact that we are not really, we don't have a, a good enough retracement. Final wave C of this complex correction. You mean started here at the at the blue line, right? And you think it's a wave C, out of which we're just seeing wave one right now, right? Something like this. What's wrong with my mouse? Um, wave one. I'm just uh, trying to understand uh, what's your outlook on this uh, dam. So this would be wave one, right? We could see some corrections. And you're you're expecting then uh, the market to continue higher into a three, four, and five, right? Something like this. The entire wave five of C. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's actually my uh, my outlook as well. So it, it's not like this at all, right? It, it's not like I just... Um, it, the the waves are not the way I plotted them uh, on the chart right now. Okay. I think uh, I know where you're coming from. Um, I have the same outlook. Wave 5 of C, something like this. Mhm. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. That's that's what I had in mind as well. Something like this. Marginal up. Uh, for me, that's about thirty forty pips. But it's not thirty forty pips that I want to take, because they they might be very the, the price action could be very choppy here. Basically, from now on, it can stop any time. This is not to to say that I I would go uh, short, uh, assuming that we're ending, but it looks to me like indeed 
Exactly that. That's that's what I'm looking for as well. That's what I'm looking for as well. Because once this is over, you see, guys. Now just remember that this will be the correction, and I'm going to plot uh, only one wave, not to get things too confusing. Now this is the one, two, three, four, five that I have in mind. I see, uh, looking at this hourly chart to them, that even the other waves are sort of agreeing with us. One, two, three, four, complex correction, and wave five. With a dip, maybe towards one, five, three, maybe towards one, uh, I think, uh, my biggest my my most uh, aggressive shorts would stop somewhere around 50 to 80. Uh, that's all I expect for now on this wave. And to go back on the four-hour chart, now you can see the picture where this green wave ends, all the others could end. We're really not interested to go that far. We're not really interested in the pink wave or even the red wave. We're interested now in what's going on here. Okay, we have an hourly uh, close. Uh, I think it's slightly bullish. The four hour closed as well, but it's not giving me enough. No, it's not enough to to confirm a breakout at this five uh, four eighty. Not enough. So uh, what do we do? Let's see. What would be our our scenario for today? Well, given that we we would be going a bit in the unknown here, uh, now this can be just as well though as failed wave 5 we were talking about. What I want is simply a fresh low followed by a retracement, a lower high, okay, and then a lower low. So this is what I'm expecting to take a trade. It doesn't really matter where it starts. As long as the formation is in this um, sequence, okay, a lower low, a pullback that doesn't cross, doesn't uh, take out the previous high, and this would be the entry point for a short. Now, this would be an aggressive short, because we are just um, counting on the bigger picture to give us the end of a formation around uh, here on 155 and we are counting on this smaller formation which is still uh, about, I mean, it still needs to confirm to give us the entry. Okay, we have the perspective and then we have the entry. We either have both of them at the same time or we don't take a trade. Now for longs, I will have to see Something looking like this, maybe. Okay, we're going down now. Okay, this looks interesting. I have a euro dollar short. Let me just check something. I only have the pound dollar and pound yen chart. try um, opening um, the euro dollar chart on my other computer not to uh, disturb the session so um, I'm not really I'm not going to rely on this uh, small wave here because I think this is still part of the bullishness I would like a new low it actually happened now but I want now a lower high followed by a lower low yep we have some news I think Okay. All right. Uh, short term. Let's see what we're looking for. Short term. Is there anything on the bullish side could look interesting enough? Let's not forget on the five fifteen minute charts we're still in a bullish trend.
No, I just have to conclude that unless I see 155 taken out and hourly, the hourly charts staying above 155 for quite some time, I do not want the spike there. I want sustained price action ab above 155. Then this would be the only scenario I would look for in terms of longs. Um, long around 155.40 with a target of 157.10. It's about 160 pips. Okay, 160. Uh, the um, stop would have to be determined when the entry, uh, when we have the entry, because right now we're just, it's too much uh, guessing in this. Okay, I do not have enough, um, well, I don't have much actually uh, for the longs. I need uh, the break of 155. I need to see what sort of reaction I get there. So it will take some time to actually give me um, the stop for this uh, trade. So this is it for now. Um, longs around 155.47, one, well, anywhere above 155.20 when price is staying stabilizing above. Uh, that level, so I can see that this um, resistance has been taken out uh, clearly with targets. I think this qualifies as a swing trade with target around 157.10. For the short side, well, this could be interesting, but since there isn't enough to confirm um, more than just a short term uh, trade, I'm just going to stick to this possibility. Okay, because right now all I have is a bullish wave that's probably over. Probably, I do not dare to say that as I don't have enough elements just yet. Okay, I need a lower low, lower high, and again a lower low to give me a sequence, a bearish sequence to follow. Right now there is a bullish sequence active on this chart, so I cannot go short. All right, now let's have a look at the GU rainbow chart. All right. Active. Okay, so this will be the daily chart. This is the wave that we um, correctly identified somewhere around here on 164 as a midterm uh, trade short. <laughs> it was a fantastic 1,000 pips move. Uh, I only um, got small bits of these. Of, of this drop uh, did not have any trade uh, from the top all the way down okay in it's very clear that the rainbow chart is now bearish okay let's move on to the four hour chart consolidation on the four hour chart it's consistent with our conclusions um, earlier okay and we are still in the area of consolidation um, only around 154 this chart would turn bearish because, as you can see, price right now is masked by this um, barrier of moving averages. In order for the 4-hour to give a signal, we will need 154. We will need price to be visible below the bottom of the rainbow. Okay, let's see the 1-hour. Well, this is interesting. Um, the one-hour chart is also in consolidation mode for some time now, but actually the top of the rainbow is right at 15506. So it's even the rainbow chart is suggesting that this area right above 155 will be important because if it breaks, then the one-hour chart will turn, the rainbow will turn to the upside, okay? And then that will confirm exactly that bullish scenario above 15540 that we were talking about earlier. So the rainbow is confirming exactly our conclusions uh, um, on the other chart. 5530. Uh, the last few candles on what chart then? I think you're referring to a very small chart. Yeah, true, true. Uh, I, I'm not reading such um, such waves five minutes. 
15 minutes. I don't usually go uh, into such a well, at least when I analyze, I take trades that uh, have more perspective from the larger, uh, from the perspective of the larger charts. One thing is very clear, even here, you know, uh, we have a very well-defined area of consolidation which has not been broken uh, yet, and just a few pips above 155 will not convince me to follow this to the upside. Okay, now I want to see the 15 minutes chart. Well, amazingly, it's not yet um, it's not yet bullish. This is actually um, a first alignment. I call this when price is busting through the top of the rainbow, and the signal is only when price goes back, touches the yellow area, and goes back to make a fresh high. And again, that corresponds to our bullish scenario. Um, Longs around the five five twenty five five thirty. So, not really. We we don't have here enough to to sustain. Uh, well, to to justify a long trade. We are a little bit in a no trade zone here for GU. Uh, I'm afraid because the main um, direction for the daily and the four hour charts is bearish. It's not going to change uh, even with a move towards 155, 156, even 157 will not change the four hour perspective. And since we're moving up, there's a conflict between what's going on short term and the, the established uh, trends on the daily and four hour. So we're against the trend actually um, on the larger charts and with the small uh, movements on the smaller charts. This sort of um, of conflict can give um, choppy price action. All right, so I think uh, we're. I'm going to stick to the same conclusion. Um, either we wait for one five five thirty, one five five forty to go long on GU, uh, but it would have to be. Uh, swing trade with larger stops and well maybe some patience will, will be required there because there will be probably lots of um, corrections lots of uh, noise on that move you're going to be in and out of money uh, many times it happens a lot uh, when you are trading consolidation all right I think this is it for GU. Let's have a look at GJ now. Now this was the long from last um, week. We had some minor, this was exactly the, the point where um, we made the call for long, uh, right here in the room. 1.1995, one, uh, one, uh, okay, and the stop uh, I suggested was 20, right here at this yellow line, and the target somewhere in the 1.23. 31150. First target was uh, easily reached, and then actually the high was 12080, which is not bad. Almost 100 pips on this uh, move before uh, price reversed. This was based, I think, uh, mainly on a rainbow um, pattern. Worked out pretty well. All right. Let's see what we have. Uh, let's have a look at this chart first. Now this is an analysis I made about five weeks back. It's a large downtrend on the daily chart. Uh, I still think we're in the same pattern. We're looking at a downward channel. I was actually quite uh, confident in uh, longs for GJ until it reached this uh, 126 area. Starting 126, I refers to um, a bearish perspective. I was thinking that it might uh, turn and never reach this low again, the low of 122.40. Obviously, when you have close below the previous support, that perspective uh, fails. So this is when I build up this uh, channel um, view. And it, um, I think it gave a pretty um, good uh, perspective overall. Here you go. How uh, Look how in interesting it is that 
these tests of the resistance on the daily chart, even with the volatility in um, GJ, are still respected. Now, we're looking at a parallel line. As you can see, even the target here, based on this parallel... Uh, one moment, I'll just uh, duplicate uh, the line above and move it right here on these lows to give us a possible support area. Okay? We have price failing first at this support area. Now we'll see where it's trying to go. Very little to adjust on this um, pattern. The retracement uh, wave to went just slightly higher than uh, the level I had uh, on my chart. Then we have wave 3, then we have the retracement, oh, sorry, retracement wave 4. It's the same um, question, um, are we done with wave 4, or we're looking already for um, more upside? Is it over? or we have more to come. And this would be the target I would expect for GJ over the next uh, few days or maybe one or two weeks. All right, let's zoom in. Okay, the top seems to be here. All right. Well, First of all, you can see that the trend line is broken on this red wave. Trend line is broken. There is no need for me to plot it. Uh, it's very clear. First wave is complete. We have consolidation, possibly another test. I would look for the previous support to become resistance. So this would be the target. Amazingly, it, you can see that it actually happened on the first attempt at 119. I would look for this to hold in case it's starting, it's trying again. And then, according to my account here, we should be on a wave 2. So, um, the the bearishness is actually um, still um, active. I don't think the smaller charts will agree to this, but my perspective would be shorts starting 119 and 119.70, not higher than, one, than 120. Okay, 120 will be the stop and the bottom line, but you actually have to see um, sustained price action here, not just a spike. Um, I think the stops will have to be actually higher than that to uh, make sure that you're not stopped out uh, on a spike. This is always a problem for me with GJ, because um, using these um, technical stops sometimes gives me quite large uh, risk for one trade, a risk that I'm not always uh, willing to take. Um, 119.60, the stop will be 120.55, it's about 90 pips, 100 pips. Indicators are flat. I think uh, we can just say this is flat. Uh, it doesn't really give the the bullish uh, signal that uh, GU was giving. So I think in general GJ is uh, more bearish than GU. All right. Uh, we have resistance, I think, uh, right around here as well. Again, resistance area around 118.77. Uh, we just uh, failed to break that resistance. And we have one hour support as well. Well, we're stuck here in a narrow range, 118.80, 118.20. Uh, uh, All right. Now, I'll just give you my opinion on this. Uh, we are still, of course, while we are inside this channel, it's anyone's guess where we are going. And I'm not going to try... Um, giving any um, assumption whether we're going up or down. Clearly, this is a no-trade zone. 
So we are in a consolidation. It's not easy to see that consolidation before it happens, but right now we can actually see we are still inside it because the key levels were not breached. Even if the move up goes and uh, touches 119, I wouldn't trust this for a long. I would only um, be long above 120.50. I would want to see the previous high taken out and this wave turning into a really uh, strong bullish momentum. Otherwise, I, I'd rather risk on a short below 118, because that would turn this wave into a consolidation, and we would continue the momentum from this wave. One, two, three, four, five. Retracement, and another one, two, three, four, five. That's the wave I would like to catch. So for me, actually, shorts are more interesting. That's what the bigger charts are suggesting. That's what the four hour chart is actually uh, telling me. Maybe not at this very second, but we are not in a bullish um, pattern. That That's pretty clear for me. So 118 could uh, open the way for um, first that uh, retest of 117, 11680, the previous uh, level of support. Yeah, 11680. And then my final target would be around 115.61, maybe even 115. I think uh, shorts should be favored on uh, pound yen. Not right now, because again, I, I, I repeat, while we are inside this uh, consolidation channel, I will make no effort to try to guess where the market is going. It um, doesn't interest me. It's just not uh, an interesting uh, pair to trade while it's um, doing this choppy uh, price action inside a, a narrow uh, band. Either it breaks 118, in which case I'll be looking for uh, the first pullback, the support to turn into resistance. So uh, you could actually um, try to short at this level after the breakout. So if it breaks, goes 117.80, 117.60, anywhere, once you see it pulling back, actually GJ gives this nice pattern, uh, support turning into resistance and vice versa, that you can use for entries. At that time, you would know at least that the consolidation area is broken. Of course, of course, I, I wanted to say that then, we are looking for... Um, some um, increased volatility um, after um, the rate decision. I don't think necessarily because of the rate decision. Uh, my conclusion basically is that these uh, rate decisions are more like excuses for the market to react. Okay, in a, in a technical way, generally, um, we rarely saw some big surprises uh, happening with the rate decisions. So I don't think it's because of the fundamentals per se, but because the market expects something to happen uh, at that time or later after that, um, after the, the, the rate decision is out. Uh, but clearly, um, either way, uh, the fundamentals should help one of these technical scenarios to, to come into play eventually. And also, guys, you, you can see that these consolidations rarely happen when... Um, right after the fundamentals. Uh, they tend to happen before that when the market is somewhat uh, more prudent and market actors are waiting to, um, they are reassessing their, their position and the market sort of comes into a balance. Both and bears um, put down their weapons for a while. After that, once we, we have a winner, then uh, I think uh, stronger volatility and, and increased momentum should follow. All right, to conclude on all this, um, for me, guys, the shorts seem to be uh, better favored, at least on GJ, but I wouldn't um, short until we have at least a 118, at least, the very least, a 118. Even a, a spike towards 119.20 might uh, give opportunities for those uh, really for 
traders who don't mind high risk positions, um, the so called um, top and bottom pickers. If you are that sort of trader, well, you might want to have a look around this 119.20 for a possible false breakout after that price could move down uh, quite um, quickly. Of course, I, I do not have any uh, technical um, pattern um, except the wave, okay, and an expectation of this uh, level to to be a, a fresh high followed by a drop to support this view, okay. You will actually have to take a chance when when you are trying to pick a top or a bottom. I think 90% of the time um, there's a lot of uh, luck involved. Okay, there's nothing confirmed at this time, but if you see it, if you see a, a spike here and then price stabilizing back into the channel, that would be another hint that price will actually turn bearish eventually. And it's trying to turn bearish and just spiked up, maybe cleared uh, some stops above this level before dropping. Uh, for longs, I don't see that much. Um, that would be a move against the trend and we will have to see really um, good volatility, strong price action above 119.20. Um, I think only above 120.50 I would be interested to buy for a larger retracement uh, consolidation pattern with 123 in, in the site. Uh, still, it's, it's a risky um, trade because um, when you're trading against the main trend on the 4-hour and daily, uh, moves against you can be very quick and very deep, and that can uh, can really hurt. Um, well, can give you a loss, um, very quick loss. And I, I don't like uh, placing large stops on such trades because if you are trading against the trend, it, it doesn't matter how large the stop you have. You can have 500 pips, market can still reach it. If you are trading with the trend, then larger stops for me make more sense because you're, you're really confident about the direction. Uh, that's not uh, my case right now on long. As for uh, GU, basically I'm looking for signs that this retracement uh, consolidation range is over, uh, the bears are back in control. That should be after a 1 to 3 pattern Starting from around here, it can happen anytime, but I, I guess um, the first push will have to be right after the news, the first, uh, let's say, two minutes after the news. Then the pullback can be this wave, and that's where I would start looking for a trade. The third wave is yours. It's, uh, it's where I like to, to um, join a move that's already been confirmed, so that will take one move de defining the bearish wave, another move retracing that, and the third would be mine uh, when the first move is reconfirmed. It's just uh, not very easy right now to give any sort of prediction. Um, I think that's, uh, that's the best we can do with what the market is showing at this time. All right. So this will be the picture uh, based on the waves. Uh, for GU, you can see you're actually looking at a bearish trend and the retracement will have to be approached with caution and, and maybe uh, if you are going long, I know, I, I like scalping uh, these moves because sometimes um, I, I don't, I'm not comfortable uh, having a large stops, so um, I, I want to get out as soon as possible. But if it comes, to, when it comes to short, um, I think better, more stable positions can be ta uh, taken, and uh, especially uh, back uh, towards 154, when we see that this low here actually is taken uh, out and we have a lower low, that would be the confirmation that you need for wave 5, whether you are already in or not. All right. I think this is it for today, guys. Um, let me know, please, if you have any questions. Hopefully, the market will... Um, give us some uh, more clues over the, in the next hours. I'll uh, take a break uh, until uh, later. Probably not going to trade until the U.S. session. I uh, want to see what's the reaction after the fundamentals first. 
and uh, try to to understand um, whether the majors will move uh, based on those fundamentals. All right. Thank you guys for attending. Um, hope um, we managed to get a few pips out of these um, setups. It can actually go either way. So uh, long or short, hopefully the market uh, will give us the right moment to to enter and to to take our pips um, out of this uh, out of these moves. It's always difficult, at least for me, in uh, in consolidation. Thank you, guys. Thanks for your participation. And I'll see you all next uh, Thursday. Have a great uh, weekend.